Aloha and welcome back to Kona Cocktail Academy for your second cocktail short, The Sidecar, class one, two. So the sidecar originated either in Europe or in New Orleans. It's been debated both, but it most likely developed in Paris because brandy is a really big thing in France. And brandy, if you don't already know, is a spirit that is made from fruits. And it could be any fruits, but traditionally they use grapes. You may have heard of cognac. Well, cognac is a brandy that's made in a specific region. And for something to be called cognac, it has to follow a very specific set of rules and be from a very specific place. So a good rule of thumb is all brandy is not cognac, but all cognac is brandy. And just remember that a brandy is gonna be a distillate of any fruit. So usually grapes, but it could be apples, it could be strawberries, it could be blueberries, it could be anything that's considered a fruit. So both New Orleans and France have this really um, developed brandy culture. And it's thought that the drink was invented in Paris and the drink is named after the sidecar on a motorcycle. And that's pretty well accepted that it's the sidecar to the motorcycle. And it's again, a very simple recipe. It is brandy. So I'm gonna be using a really nice brandy from Francis Ford Coppola's Vineyards in Napa, which I have been to, and they are beautiful. If you ever get a chance, you should go. It's called the Agnesi, and it's inspired by a woman inventor, and it's delicious. It's small batch. It's hard to get your hands on. If you are lucky enough to try it, please do. Um, the traditional recipe for the sidecar called for cognac, but I'm just going to use brandy because I don't have any cognac on hand, but I would use Hennessy or any kind of um, cognac for mixing. A really nice cognac I wouldn't mix. A really nice cognac I would sip. The second ingredient is gonna be triple sec. And we'll get more into liqueurs later on as we go, but triple sec is basically a neutral grain spirit usually made from sugar cane and infused or fermented with orange peels, usually bitter orange um, and some kind of sweet orange as well. And we'll get into the different types. Cointreau is traditionally used in this recipe. The recipe was published in Jerry Thomas's book in 1862. It was slightly different. It was a brandy cresta, so it was sugar on the rim, it was bitters, it was lemon, it was brandy, and an orange liqueur. But it was actually printed in a cocktail book under the name of the sidecar in, let me check my notes, 1948 by David Embry. And that was pretty close to the traditional recipe, which is the two ounces of brandy, 0.5 of lemon juice and 0.25 of triple sec. Um, yeah, it's super simple, super refreshing, and super good. Um, I don't know what else to say about it besides you should definitely try it if you haven't. It's usually served in a stemmed glass, so I've seen them in coupes. I've actually seen them in brandy crusta glasses. Uh, today I'm going to go ahead and use a martini glass. And I'm gonna prep my glass by taking my lemon half and I'm just gonna put some lemon juice on there. I don't really like using simple syrup to sugar my glass rims. I like using actual lemon juice or lime juice. It's a little hard in this dish here. Um, and you could go all the way around the glass, but I usually like doing something like so it looks like modern art, you know, something like that. And this is just pure granul granulated sugar. So um, the sugar glass is the garnish to this drink. And you could totally do a lemon twist. I'm using these beautiful Myers lemons here from the Big Island. Those are the three ingredients. And um, I personally would probably put a twist in there because the Myers has such a beautiful, distinct taste. So this recipe from 1948 is super strong and I'm gonna make the drink a little bit more like what we would make today for a cocktail. Palettes have changed, the amount of alcohol in beef have, has been changed. So normally your base for an alcohol is gonna be about 1.25 or 1 1.5, um, kind of like I did the daiquiri in the first lesson. So I'm gonna use 1.25 of the brandy 
and I'm going to use 0.5. I'm going to kick this up from, so I'm bringing this down, bringing the brandy down a bit, and I'm bringing this up a bit to 0.5, and I'm also going to do 0.5 of the lemon juice because triple sec is not as sweet as sugar, so it's not, or a simple syrup, so it's not going to, I mean, it is sweet. It is definitely going to add some sweetness, but it's still going to come off really tart unless you lick the sugar. And that's what the sugar is for. The drink is a tart, citrusy, refreshing drink. So I'm not going to change it too much, but I, I just know what I like. And because I'm drinking this, I am going to do it the way that I want to taste it. <laughs> and, you know, that's what craft cocktails is, is really figuring out what people's palates are and then... Um, giving them what they want and it can be as different as 0.25 of liquor 0.25 ounces between a margarita makes a sweet or a tart margarita like I can't stand an over sweet margarita I have a really tart palate so I'm going to do 0.5 of the triple sec and you can buy fancier triple sec I'm probably going to end up making my own this is just what I had in my liquor cabinet already so I figured I might as well use it and as you know we juice our we fresh juice our vet or fruits We'll go ahead and make sure there's half ounce in there. Perfect. And all in the shaker tin. Let me get this out of the way. Um, I did want to touch on this too before I shake this cocktail. The two books that I use for reference all the time that you should pick up for yourselves or if you're interested in knowing like where I get the history of a drink or those classic recipes. This is Salvador Calabrese. Uh, I had the pleasure of meeting him in London, and this is his book, Classic Cocktails. I believe he's from Italy, but he has been on the London cocktail scene for decades. He is known as the maestro, and he is a maestro of alcohol. So I really trust his definitions and, like, or origin stories, and I double-check that with Vintage Spirits and Forgotten Cocktails, which is my end-all be-all. I've had every edition of this book. If you're my friend and I like you, I probably gave you a copy because I've given it to a bunch of people uh, for inspiration and for reference. So these are the two books that I really reference when I'm doing these little cocktail shorts. If you're interested in finding out for yourself, that is where I would start. You can also, I always try and double check with Wikipedia as well. And just like, like I went to the Cointreau, um, website to double check how they make Cointreau and what kind of orange they use and um, so I kind of use a lot of different references but those are my two standards so I'm gonna go ahead and give it a shake and get this sidecar started I think that's about enough Oh, and that looks amazing. So I'll post the traditional recipe and then I'll also put my version of it. You know, when you get into doing your own cocktails, you can kind of gauge on a sweet or tart version where you want your drink to be on that spectrum. But there it is, guys. It's a classic sidecar. That's what they look like. And I'm going to go ahead and enjoy it. And for my students, I hope you've been practicing your pour test. And for the public, if you need more information about the courses, please go to www.konacocktailacademy.com or sub subscribe to us on the YouTube. Thanks for coming. It's been a pleasure having you, and we'll see you next time. Aloha.